transcribed. Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, brought to you tonight by Plymouth, with exciting news about a $25,000 contest and a brand new 54 high-style Plymouth, coming Thursday. together in a room, you and the one you love, the objects of an experiment, while the man who has dared you to undergo his test is waiting for the moment when you break and in your defeat find that there is no escape. This is the week, Thursday's the day. The day the brand new 54 high-style Plymouth makes its debut. And what a car. Big, bright, beautiful. Longer this year with a sleek, low, wide look. And a new kind of beauty to set everyone talking, everyone exclaiming about Plymouth's luxurious high style. Never before in the low price field have you seen such elegance in the appointments of a car. Such fabulous fabrics and choice of color combinations. Such unusual attention to detail. It's high style, all right. Exclusive in the new 1954 Plymouth. And remember, Thursday's the day... To see the new Plymouth and also to enter the big Plymouth contest. $25,000 in prizes, including six handsome new 54 Plymouth. We'll tell you more about this exciting contest later in the show. Meanwhile, remember, Thursday's the day to visit your Plymouth dealer for a first-hand look at the big, bright, beautiful new 54 Plymouth. <laughs> Listen now as Escape brings you Stephen Vincent Benet's unusual story, Elementals. I sometimes think of it. Not often, because it's too frightening. But just sometimes. It's a thing that you'd never believe could have happened. But it did when I look across the room at Kathy, I remember that time not too long ago. The night it started. That was the real beginning. It was a slow night. I kept cruising around, looking for a fare and thinking. Driving a cab oh, hadn't been too bad. But there was Kathy. We were engaged, wanted to be married, and money was a pretty big problem. Then I saw the two men standing under the marquee of the Broadway theater. Now that was something more practical to think about. A fair. Uh, uh, Eastwood Club, 40th Street. Yes, sir. Uh. Well, Gaines, what did you think of the play? I found it very moving. Did you really? <laughs> Sentimental drivel. May I quote for you? When it comes to the invisible power that rules life itself, we find that it is, as always, love. The love of a man for a woman. <laughs> well, what's so funny about that, Slate? It's not funny. It's pathetic. Love. It comes in a poor last in running the inhabitants of this planet, I can assure you. Well, what do you think comes in first? The elementals. Fear, hunger, and hate. Oh, I don't believe that. You can't face it, you mean. Nonsense. Logic should tell you that I know what I'm talking about. The greatest accomplishments, all of the world's progress is in one way or another brought about through hate, struggle, killing. Certainly not love. You're wrong. Men do more for what they love and believe in. Oh, don't be naive. Love. Why, there aren't a pair of lovers in the world that I couldn't turn against each other. <laughs> well, I'll go further. I could take the most devoted couple and have them gouging each other's eyes out in a week. And I wouldn't touch them. You honestly think... I that... honestly know. Of course, it would have to be an average man and woman. Uh, 
the him, for example. Who? Cabby. Yes, sir? Have you heard what we've been talking about? Yes, sir. Well, what do you think? I'm sorry, it's against the company regulations to get in arguments with the customer. The devil with regulations, I assume you've got a mind. What do you think? Am I right? No, sir, you're not. Huh. You're in love? Yes. <laughs> Undying, perfect love? We're happy with it. And you think I couldn't part you? No. Would you like to make a bet on that? No. <laughs> There are gains, you see. I don't see anything. It's obvious the man says he's in love, but he won't gamble on it. He knows I'm right. I think you're nuts, sir. And this is the Eastwood Club. I'll say this for him. He gave me a buck tip. And I'll say something else for him. He didn't belong in this century. That's what I told Kathy when I got off. And then we forgot about it. Until one evening a week later when I got a call at the garage. Mr. Davis Latimer. Speaking. How do you do, Mr. Latimer? This is John Slake. You do remember. You drove me to the Eastwood Club last week. We had a slight discussion about love. Yeah, I remember, all right. How did you get my name? I took the trouble of noting down your cab number and checking with your company. I see. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Slake? I'm on my way out to work and I... Well, Mr. Latimer, I shall come immediately to the point then. I'm a rich man, Latimer, and I'd like to make you an offer, one you won't wish to turn down. What kind of an offer? Well, I'd rather discuss that in person. Will Sunday afternoon be convenient? What kind of an offer? Oh, you're suspicious, Mr. Latimer. Yeah, that's right. Very well. My offer has to do with money. Money for you. A good deal of it. And I assure you that you will have to do nothing which will in any way compromise your high moral principles. Look, mister, this is your idea of... I'm extremely serious... If you will call at my house on Sunday afternoon, you will find it to your advantage. However, there is one point. Oh, uh, I wish you to bring your young lady with you. I don't know. Think it over, Mr. Latimer. I'm sure you're a sensible man. And believe me, my offer is no joke. My address is 490 Park. You will think it over, won't you? I'll talk to her about it. Good, good. I look forward to seeing you both on Sunday. Ah. Now, Miss Vane, Mr. Latimer, to business. My offer. Did he speak of it to you, Miss Vane? Yes. Well, excellent. And what was your opinion of my theories? <laughs> Are you married, Mr. Slake? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Then you wouldn't understand. You're wrong. Ah, good, good. You share your fiancé's views that nothing could come between you. At least not I. No. I don't think you could. <laughs> Would you both be willing to test my theory? Let us say, pit your love against one of my brute elementals. What kind of test? A test by hunger. <laughs> hunger, Mr. Latimer. That's your offer? Only part of it. The part that I feel might interest you is the remuneration. There will be a certified check of $10,000 waiting for you if your love proves stronger than my hunger... <laughs> How do we prove that? You will be without food of any kind for ten days. At the end of that time, a piece of bread will be thrown between you. If you're still in love with each other, you'll, of course, share the bread between you. If, however, you're in the grips of my elemental hunger, you'll fight over the stale crust like two beasts. That's silly. We wouldn't. No two people in love would. That's what love is. Well, perhaps you're right, but I'd like to be convinced. Look, are you serious about this? $10,000 for going hungry for 10 days? Oh, why not? I'm being generous. I'm offering you $10,000 to back up your own statements. And uh, I'll even cut the time down from 10 days to 7. No. No, I don't plan to starve Kathy or myself to prove anything to you. Oh, forget about me. You can use the $10,000. Otherwise, you wouldn't be driving a cab. You and Miss Vane could be married immediately instead of penny-pinching your way through years of endless drudgery to save up enough money. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the drinks, Mr. Slake. We'll be going... No, here. wait a minute. He's right, David. What do you mean, he's right? He is. We haven't got anything to lose. Ten thousand dollars. And if that's all we have to do... I give you my word. Why not? We love each other, don't we? Well, sure we do, All but right. But... Let's do it. Look, I'd have to quit my job. I'll make it up to you, Mr. Latimer. I'll double your salary. Triple it, 
Even if you lose our wager. Oh, Kathy, you Yes. Can... I'm not afraid. Okay. You're on, Mr. Slake. During the next few days, it was all arranged. The experiment was to run from Monday through Sunday midnight. Kathy and I were put in a large room in the upper story of Slake's mansion. We were always visible through large glass doors. There was an iron cot and mattress at each end of the room, a, a table, and some chairs, and that was about all. At 12.01, Monday morning to the minute, Slate came in to issue his last instructions as our seven days of starvation began. I have provided you with sanitary facilities on all the running water you want. However, I'm afraid you must do without soap or toothpaste. Unfortunately, they are edible. My apologies, Miss Vane. Lipstick and rouge are also forbidden for the same reason. What about reading books, magazines? I'm afraid not. You would find the pages too tasty to resist as time passed. The same applies for pencil and paper. Any other questions? No. No, I guess not. Very well. You understand that no matter how you beg, plead, scream, or cry out, you will not be given food for the next 168 hours. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah, it's clear. <laughs> well, I wish you luck, then. The first day was easy enough. We talked about old friends, made plans for our future, played word games, anything to pass the time. <laughs> we even made jokes about food. The hunger pangs didn't come until the middle of the second day. They came in suddenly with the sharpness of iron teeth biting hard into your stomach and letting go, and then biting again. Both of us felt it. Are you all right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, you? Oh, of course. You're not sorry we started this thing? No. <clears throat> no, no. Of course not. Ten thousand bucks, I, I, I can take it for a week if you can. A week? That's not long, is it? Besides, it's only six days now. As the day wore on, the hunger pains grew worse. The iron teeth jabbed into my stomach harder and harder. And in between, all I could think of was food. Winter breakfast in the country. Hot cakes, golden, puffy, a huge warm pile of them, brown and yellow syrup. Roast beef, thick slices, real thick. Rare. Then that evening, Slake, who was always there watching behind the glass doors, stopped in on us. He seemed to read my mind. Everything perfectly all right, I suppose, Mr. Latimer? Miss Vane? Yeah, everything is fine, Mr. Slake. <laughs> oh, how charming. You are admirable guests, indeed. You make so little demands on one's hospitality. You know, I wished for you at dinner this evening. I really wished for you. Did you, Mr. Slake? Yes, yes. The bisque had a trifle too much whipped cream for my taste, but the fish... Well, the fish was perfection. Baked bluefish, you know. And the roast... Cut it out! Oh? Well, forgive me. I didn't realize my elemental had already begun to touch you. Don't worry. You're not going to win. Well, perhaps not. But, uh... A similar test was attempted in the 16th century by a Prince Alessandro on a devoted couple in his court. The results were most interesting. Yeah, I'll bet. Yes, really. They uh, tore at each other's flesh, <laughs> tangled themselves into such a horrible knot that Alessandro's men could hardly get them apart. <laughs> That's how strong their love was, Mr. Latimer. We will return to escape in just a moment. But first... Hello? Hi, Bob. You listen to escape on the radio? Sure, always do. Well, then you heard what they said about... Not the new 54 Plymouth coming out Thursday. 
I was wondering if... I'm way ahead of you, John. Meet you right after work Thursday, and we'll have a look at it. Swell. And what I was going to suggest... Well, of course, John. We've got to enter that contest. Somebody's going to win that gorgeous new 54 Plymouth convertible. Trouble is, I can't decide which color I'd like. Sorry, Bob, old boy, but I'm taking a stab at that contest, too. The new Plymouth convertible would look mighty good in my garage, and we can't both win first prize. Afraid you'll have to settle for one of the Plymouth sedans they're giving away. Or one of the cash prizes. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll see about that. Right now, I want to get back and hear the rest of Escape. Me, too, but don't forget, we got a date to see that new Plymouth on Thursday. On the third day, the hunger pangs were no longer sharp jabs. Now it was a constant, violent, gnawing, nibbling feeling inside. It was a pulling ache deep in my head as if someone were jerking my brain from its socket with an ice hook. And I, I know she was feeling just as badly. We tried to talk to each other, but... We'd already said everything there was to say five times over. She tried to cheer me up, but her voice suddenly had a whine to it that was driving me out of my mind. Everything was driving me mad. I, I couldn't think straight anymore. Dave? What? Tell me about that time you ran away from home. You heard it a hundred times. I'd like to hear it again. You're a liar. Dave, don't. Shut up. Well, we've got to do something, Davey. I, I thought if we... Look, well, why don't we count the bluebirds on the wallpaper? You know, I found a new way of counting them. If I start from the side, I, I can get 22 bluebirds to each wall instead of 21. I don't want to count bluebirds. You must. Stop whining at I me. know. Mark off the room. That's fun. I've marked it off a million times, a million times. You want to know the figures? Yes. Tell me the figures. 40 shoe feet long, 30 shoe feet wide, 43 bare feet by 31 and a half bare feet, 126 fists by 97 fists, 1,213 thumbs by 931 thumbs. Are you satisfied? That was wonderful, Davy. What was wonderful about it? Where? I'm trying my best, Davy. I'm just trying. Oh, stop <laughs> trying. I'll hit you. I swear I... I'll hit you. You think I'm not hungry, too? I hope you're starving. You did this to me. It's your fault. I'd never be here if you didn't stick your face into it. Starve. Go on. I hate you. You're horrible. Get off that chair and over to the cot, because if you don't, I'm going to smash your face. Good evening. What do you want? I trust everything's all right. No, everything's not all right, you fat pig. <laughs> I thought I detected signs of gathering violence. Why don't you get out? Go on, get out. I could never forgive myself if anything should happen to the young lady. I don't need your help, Mr. Slake. I can take care of myself. I'm afraid not. You heard her. She doesn't want you here. Now get out. Ah, but Miss Vane doesn't appreciate the power of an elemental. It can easily turn the man she fancies she's in love with into a murderer. <laughs> That's why I believe I'll sit down and stay a while. Oh, Jacques. Jacques. Oui, monsieur. Duty calls. I'm afraid I'll be forced to dine in here. Ay bien, monsieur. And what is it that monsieur desires this evening? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, an American cuisine for tonight. Let me see. We can start off with shrimp cocktail, but be sure it's surrounded with plenty of cracked ice. Next, I'd like soup. Uh, clam chowder. Rich, thick, Clam chowder. It will be as you order, monsieur. And for my entree, steak. A thick, juicy steak, quite rare, seasoned with garlic and smothered in onions. <laughs> well, Mr. Latimer, I must say you're handling yourself very well. All right, Jacques, I'll order the dessert later. You may go. Monsieur? I didn't look at her. I didn't care. Both of us were pretending we didn't see, we didn't hear. I don't know why. Slake sat with us smiling. Nobody said anything. I watched Jacques leave and come back a while later with a tray bulging with food. Ah! I felt myself shivering at the side of it. But I still didn't say anything. I waited until Jacques set the tray down on the table in front of Slake. Oh, the steak is tender tonight, monsieur. Excellent, excellent. I find myself with quite a vigorous appetite. Oh, uh, don't go yet, Jacques. I may need you. Slake put his fork into the thick white meat of a shrimp, streaming with red sauce. That's when I jumped out of it. Get away! Get away, animal! Oh, I suspected you were up to something, Latimer. I want the food. 
I've got to have it. Slick, I'm not taking any more. I can't. I'm not going to go. Stay back. Stay back, I warn you. No, no, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Stay back. <laughs> now, one more step and I won't miss, oh, Mr. You Latimer. dirty, you dirty, thinking. Really? I'm not as bad as all that. <laughs> I even considered giving you a bite to eat before. Lying. Oh, but I'm not. Would you like that, Latimer? <laughs> No mean I assure you I do. Of course, I don't appreciate being attacked and then vilified by a torrent of insults. No, no, no. I lost my head, Mr. Slake. Yes, I did. You're, you're a really clever man, Mr. Slake. You're very clever. I'm sorry. I'm so... just, just, just a taste, that's all. <laughs> just a taste. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how long I cried. When I stopped, my mind was all right again, for a minute anyway. I saw Kathy lying in the other cot at the far end of the room. She was sobbing. It was a sad sound. I, I remembered what I'd done. I hobbled over to a cot. <laughs> Kathy. 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 Don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Uh, I, I don't I don't want to hurt you, darling. You're not angry, Dave? I, I, I didn't know what I was saying before. I, I can't be angry with you, darling. I love you. Dave. Dave. I'm sorry. I'm hungry. That night, it was worse than ever. It was a nauseous, heavy hunger that nagged, nagged, wouldn't let go. I drank gallons of water. I, I poured the useless, flimsy stuff down my throat until I choked, but I got, I got no relief. None at all. Morning finally came. That was worse yet. The dizziness set in. I, I tried to get up. The floor kept falling away. I, I had rubber legs... I found myself getting angry at a, a crease in the carpet at, at my untied shoelace. I, I managed to get to one of the chairs in the center of the room. I, I can't tell you what for. Then I, I saw Kathy coming toward me, crawling on all fours. Dave? Dave? Yes. Oh, what is it? Help me up. I want to sit on the chair. All right. You made me fall. You made me fall. I'm sorry. Sorry. What good does that do? Stay away from me. What is it? Dave. Away? Dave. 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 Stop. Cry. Go ahead. Cry. You're ugly. You're ugly. No, no. You're ugly. You have like a stringy, I'm dirty not. old mop. Stringy, dirty old mop. I hate you. It's all your fault. No, no. Don't talk to me that way. No. Away. Get away from me. I can't stand the sight of you. You make me sick. Get away. Go. I hope you starve to death. Hear me. I hope you starve. I lost all track of time. It may have been five days, six, I don't know. I heard strange sounds that were part of me but seemed to come from outside as well. I also remember crawling. There was a squawking voice that came from my chest but didn't sound like me that kept talking to itself. I'll have more cream. Yes, sugar too. And potato, please, lots of potato. French fry. No, no. Lamb chops today, steak tomorrow. Bacon, well done. I'm hungry. I'm hungry! You want to be horsewhipped for this slake? I don't want any sermons, Gaines. Now, you're ready to witness the test. Yes. Let's get it over with, for heaven's sakes. All right. Now, watch. All right, get up. There, between you. The food is there on the floor. Get up! I saw it. The bread on the floor. A tiny dot far out in space. Painfully, I, I slid down from the couch. On all fours, I slowly pushed forward. I noticed a woman on the other side of the room, 
lying on her cot staring at me and at the bread. She tried to get up, but couldn't. I wondered who the strange, skinny woman was. I finally reached the bread. I touched it shyly. It was soft. I shivered as my hand closed around. Hey, hey. The woman again. Hey. I wondered whose name she was calling. Hey. Didn't really matter, though. I picked up the slice of bread and I sniffed. Darling, did you hear me, darling? Kathy. I started to put the bread clumsily into my mouth. Darling, I'm so hungry. That was Kathy. Catherine, the girl I was going to marry. And she was hungry. That's all there was to it. I started across the miles of carpet. <laughs> Red. Red. You waited. You first. You're, you're hungrier. No. I love you. It's for you. I love you. Gaines, get them out of here. Give them the money and get them out of here. Hurry up and get these babies out of my sight. <laughs> like to win a brand new 1954 high style Plymouth convertible? Well, then be sure to enter the big Plymouth contest that starts this Thursday. $25,000 in prizes, including six new 54 Plymouths and hundreds of cash prizes. Your Plymouth dealer can give you an entry blank next Thursday. You'll see it contains a complete list of the prizes and the easy rules, but don't put it off because the contest closes midnight, Monday, October 19th. So how about a big red circle on the calendar around this coming Thursday? That's the day to see the new 54 Plymouth and enter the big contest. Is it a date? It's big, the 54 Plymouth. It's bright, the 54 Plymouth. Big, bright, beautiful too. The 54 Plymouth is a car for you. Under the direction of Anthony Ellis, Escape has brought you Elementals, a story by Stephen Vincent Bonet, adapted for radio by Meyer Dolinsky, starring Tony Barrett as Dave Latimer, William Conrad as John Slake, and Georgia Ellis as Catherine Vane. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright and Byron Kane. The special music for Escape was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> Escape, transcribed, was brought to you by Plymouth, along with a reminder that you visit your Plymouth dealer on Thursday, enter the $25,000 contest, and see the big, bright, beautiful new 54 Plymouth, Thursday. This is the CBS Radio Network.